a little message. Okay. Okay, so welcome to the um, first night of the support sessions leading up to the assessment. Just going to go through a few details here. Um, same staff as uh, in our earlier sessions are here tonight, and um, most of us will be here for all of these sessions. Um, myself, Claire, Eric, George, Matt, and Peter. And uh, we'll, in some form, um, be helping you do this stuff. So this is the people. I sent an email about the schedule. I'm, I'm going to um, turn off these. Um, turn off these uh, subtitles there and I can add them back later programmatically if we need them, but um, it's hiding some of my my slide here. The schedule is that we're going to do this every Wednesday. Um, for the next four weeks. It's going to be five to seven links via Teams. Sent the link to join in the email. Of course, if you're here tonight, they say where I come that I'm preaching to the choir. You guys already know where to find the link. The link's also up on the Moodle Hub page if people are um, having trouble finding it. Now, the purpose of this is uh, one, one purpose is. Um, to use it for open lab time. If uh, if people can attend these, whoops, I wanted to uh, turn on my my little pointer here. Let me try to turn that on again. There we go. The purpose, um, one purpose that people may want to use this for is um, is just to use it as time to work on your assessment. I think it would be a good use of your time because then if if a little coding question comes up, we're right here. I answer stuff as as a few of you have noticed pretty quick in Slack. Um, I, I haven't I haven't put a reminder on here to use Slack, but um, if if you have turned off the notifications or if it was annoying you before, it maybe you'll find it useful now to ask the little code question between these help sessions. Um, but uh, some of this time could be time you set aside in your own busy life. To, to actually make some progress on the assessment. Eight full hours um, is quite a lot of time. It, and if you're prepared, um, you could make quite a lot of progress. And, and it could also be quite efficient because you'd be able to ask questions um, and get immediate feedback on them. Um, one of the kinds of ways that we're going to interact in here is that uh, we can interact by you asking general questions. I, I hope some of the things I say in the next few minutes will answer a lot of the general questions. Uh, and then the other kind of thing is something very specific to your own data set, your own assignment. And uh, th this is probably the main kind of question that we'll get, a coding question or something about your data or um, something in that, in that vein. It would be best if um, the questions were, um, you know, you came with a set of these specific questions. So if you've done some work and you you find that you've run into a wall, make a note of it uh, to document it so that it's it's efficient for you to ask it. And I'll, I have a few more tips on being efficient in uh, getting help uh, and allowing us to help you in, in a few minutes. The code questions are, um, probably the ones we can help with fastest. And when you ask the code questions, the prep that we expect from you is that um, you thought a little bit about um, how to uh, replicate an error you're getting or the way you're trying to accomplish something. Um, and one of the things that I would do f straight, straight off is I would expect uh, if it's a very small code question, um, that's very specific and you're getting a specific error, I might just ask you to share your screen if you if you can do that comfortably. That would be the fastest way for me to help you if I could see what you're doing. But also, 
when I see your screen, I can see things like, well, what's in your global environment? I can see things like, um, is there a, a tidy script already set up? And, uh, and if there isn't a tidy script set up, I'm liable to say, hey, I think it's a good idea for you to go ahead and make this script very tidy with a header and a table of contents, because you have to do that for the assessment anyway, and it's, it's easier to work and get help if it's, if it's in that format to start with. So for code questions, that's one way to do it. A second way to do it is um, you can use Slack or you can drop the text of um, your code in the chat channel. And we've already been doing that. Uh, a lot of us, uh, when we started these meetings during the labs, when you drop it into Slack, oftentimes we, uh, it will help us to help you as fast as possible. If um, <clears throat> if the way you ask the question with code is reproducible, by which I mean um, uh, either provide an example of the data structure that you have in the code that you provide, or give us a, enough surrounding information so that there's context to the code. Um, otherwise, it, it often is very hard and inefficient to answer these questions in Slack. And, and if something's inefficient or you um, don't want to be bothered or or we can't solve it in Slack, this would be the perfect kind of thing to bring to these meetings. Um, and then we can look at your desktop if the, the data are too complicated. The other kind of question that is typical are stats questions. Um, the stats questions are uh, usually ones about testing assumptions or um, maybe some some specific detail about what test is best or alternative tests. And I, I think the thing that I would say with the stats tests is that um, we'll go over the assessment in just a moment, but um, you're, you're challenged in this assessment to use this, this data set that you've been assigned and come up with three statistical models that you that you run, evaluate, and report the results for in a in a very brief report in the spirit of a scientific report. And um, for for all of the tests within the boundaries of what we covered in the module, I've already given explicit examples for ev every single one, starting from um, the question, the code testing of assumptions and and the reporting of the results so there are examples for every every one and up to up to linear models um, with more than one explanatory factor on the boot camp but I also echo those simple models at the um, in the course of every lecture uh, and for the generalized linear models in the labs and the lectures I cover the same exact material but I, I don't go into that in the boot camp so I think for the stats questions, if you if you have an idea, if you already have your objective, your statement of hypothesis um, in mind, and you, you should formally do this for each one before you start coding, then, um, then performing the stats, you can use it a little bit like, uh, like uh, adapting the template that I've provided to you to refresh yourself about um, how things work in best practice. That's the intention of the repository of material here, but uh, but also we can use these sessions to directly work through that stuff. I guess I'm saying that um, a little bit of preparation will be more efficient to make progress during these meetings. Okay, a few guidelines for what uh, what I think the you guys should should do to help yourself and most efficiently progress this thing is uh, I've already mentioned come prepared you know if you don't already have um, your data in tidy data format and if you don't already have a script started based on the script template that reads in your tidy data data set sets your working directory in code uh, is the easiest thing because you can just use the code on your own computer every time to do it and and have a table of contents that that separates you know maybe one entry for the setup like i have 
for all of my um, starter scripts, and then one entry for each of your three statistical models. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. And if um, if if you don't already have that set up, just use these sessions to set it up. You know, endeavor to set that up tonight, and and also come prepared by as you're building, as you're constructing your analysis, and as you're constructing that report. Um, I, I guess I, I didn't mention the report. I was thinking just about code and data, which which sometimes feels like my whole world um, working at in my uh, in our space. <laughs> with lots of different data sets on the go at any one time every day. But uh, this also goes for the uh, report. Um, the template I give in the assessment, which I'll go through in just a moment, uh, provides a, a very formal and and a very specific series of, of headings that I expect to see and also guidance on exactly how, how long I think they should be. They shouldn't be long. They should be very brief. Um, and so you can go ahead and set up your whole your whole report document uh, with those headings in place. And you can probably go even further at this without doing any R coding to set that up. So you come prepared. And when you do have a question, make a, make a formal note of it and, and come prepared to ask it. The second thing is to utilize the existing reference material. Um, a thing that I see a lot is um, is uh, and I see it from from all kinds of students that come through here, and it, it's something I, I don't really know how to solve this for you, but um, the internet is full of help and advice. It's one of the greatest things about the stats in our analysis world. There's a huge community out there. It's and it is wonderful, but when you're first beginning, it's overwhelming because um, there might be. 10 correct answers for any one problem. And remember, there's that um, difference between the tidyverse kind of code and the base R kind of code. I mentioned this in the lectures, and it seems like a long time ago that I talked to you about that now. But um, when I've curated the boot camp and those lab pages, um, I I meant it in part to act as a set of reference material that you could become familiar with and that you could you could access. I mean, very explicitly, it's exactly the kind of work I expect to see from you. You, you could utilize the whole internet full of resources out there, but you might not you might not get a, an answer that is easy for you to implement. And it might be very different from the solutions that uh, the, the framework of solutions that I've implemented for you. So uh, I do encourage you to utilize the existing reference material I've assembled for you. The boot camp will will get you 70% um, through this assessment with with without um, without sweat. Um, a third thing is. Um, to use reproducible code examples. Now, uh, if you're asking, but what I mean by that is when you're um, when you're asking for help, this goes um, in these sessions, but it also goes for Slack. Um, is uh, when you ask a question, oftentimes uh, remember there are, are 70 of you, and um, I think some of my my the other um, assistants in here will help in Slack a little bit, but um, you, you guys will have noticed that I'll answer a lot of those questions personally. And it helps me because there's so many of you and all those different data sets. Trust me, I have not memorized every data set that you have. I do have good skills. As you can imagine, I'm able to uh, assimilate quickly uh, what a data set's all about, but I need a little bit to go on. Uh, and the same thing goes for code. So when you're asking a question, make sure and provide enough um, background material, ideally, so that your um, the error you're encountering or the problem you're encountering is reproducible by the person that wants to help you. Um, sometimes, what I do if it's a sh small enough problem and I have enough bandwidth to do it, I'll I'll try to guess or intuit what your problem is, and I'll make my own reproducible example. You will have, if you followed any of the Slack, you'll see me have done that um, several times. Uh, where I'll create my own very minimal reproducible example that is similar to what you're asking, but it'll it'll be easier for you if you create your own and you'll learn more 
as well. And it's a good habit. It's best practice. This has its own special word, a portmanteau called the reprex, a reproducible example. And uh, if, if um, any of you are ever, or maybe you already have gone online at a place like Stack Overflow or um, or the Reddit, our Reddit pages, subreddit pages, um, you, if you ask a question in there, even if it's a good question and it doesn't contain a reproducible example, a reprex, a lot of times the community will say, hey, beat it. Go read the go read the instructions about making a reproducible example and come back when you have some manners. Um, and that's the nice part of the uh, the online forums for our help. The old R, um, R mail pages were much meaner than that. Um, you have to get tough really quick. So you learn really quick to do this, but it is actually best practice and it's the fastest way for you to get help too. We'll all be very nice to you, even if you don't don't always ask reproducible examples, but um, it is best practice to do that. I'm just gonna turn my camera off one second so I can turn my email off because that sound is really bothering me and I'm still getting emails as usual. Uh, I wanna save that, yes. Into the night and through the night most, most days. There we go. So I'll just turn it back on now. <clears throat> okay, uh, my last sort of tip here is um, we've got this little this little workflow here. These little um, greater than symbols are meant to be the flow of what happens. Okay, so the first thing that should happen, I think, is you should get your data into a tidy data format. Um, if you've been assigned a CSV file, some of you will have Excel files, some of you will have CSV files. First thing to do is to save it as an Excel file. The tidy data format that, that we did in here, I expect to see an Excel file only, XLSX. Uh, and there should be one tab. The first tab should have the data. The second tab should have a data dictionary. You should check those variable names to make sure they're simple and uh, adhere to R space guidelines and um, have a good description of the data type and what the factor levels are and uh, maybe a little expl explanation of the data set. Um, not very much because there might not be much explanation. This is the first thing to do. Get your data tidy so that it's ready to analyze. Second, second thing to do is to, now you can do the objectives um, one at a time work on one objective and then work on the analysis and the graph for that analysis. Or you can do all three of your objectives at once. But you, you really have to have an, an idea based on your data to start uh, doing some coding in anger. And, um, and then you build the rest around the objectives. That's, that's the way we do it. Um, and I think a thing I didn't put on this list is to, uh, if there's any doubt in your mind, um, sometimes I have encountered uh, students that um, are on the one, one end of the hand, they're trying to survive in, in this class and in this world of data analysis. Maybe it's new to you or, or maybe um, R is new to you or every everything else. And on the other hand, I, I sometimes find students that um, make it the one of the things they want to do is to try to impress with doing something really complicated and i think um, for everybody to assuage concerns of the first group and to um to uh, encourage the second group to uh, to best practice is to keep it simple uh, the most complicated analysis is not going to impress me what i want to see here is the simplest model done well, done in a reproducible way. Keep it simple. There's, you, there's no benefit from being being complicated here. In, in fact, almost all of my effort as a statistician is uh, keeping it as simple as possible to tell the story. I'll even entertain you with an anecdote of my very first publication where I wrote a program 
that performed uh, resampling statistics. I, I, I did this technique called bootstrapping and I made my own p-value from a data set because the data set was a little bit non-Gaussian and the sample size was small. And I was, yeah, I was pretty proud of my little program. It was perfectly good. Um, it was excellent, as a matter of fact. And I submitted the manuscript and the reviewer came back and um, kind of said, this is really well written. This is really good stuff. But, you know, it can't be published with this this homemade uh, statistic. It's probably right, the statistic, but why don't you just do a t-test? Just keep it simple. And um, I, I dug my heels in and I, I went back to the editor and I said, no, sir, I've really done the right thing. This is this is perfect. And he said, no, sir, no, thank you. You can take your article somewhere else. And uh, I did. It really stung me. But over the years, I look back at it and I uh, I've gone 180 on it. If I were the reviewer now looking at that um, that paper, it is always best to keep it as simple as possible. That's that's really my strongest advice to you in this. <clears throat> OK. Now, um, I am going to go over the assignment brief. I'm going to spend a little time doing that. We have already done it once. And uh, if you're having trouble finding it, it's um, it's at this link. And I'm just going to um, drag over web page. There we go. <clears throat> and up at the top of the page on that picture, you'll see that I have the assignment brief. Now, this is this is um, a document that's administrative in nature. But yet you should find it a little helpful. Now, um, <clears throat> all of these dates, the date, the due date is, um, has been assigned to you and assigned to me. I don't have anything to do with that. I just do my best to, to uh, communicate to you what's been assigned to me. So the, you'll know that the due date is in February. We have a little bit more than about five weeks to do this. And um, I'm, I'm going to, you can read through this at your leisure if you if you wish, but I'm just going to put in my own words what the task outline is. I'll make this as big as possible in case people do like to read along. But the uh, the idea for this project is very simple. Um, the idea is to start with a real data set. Some of you may have noticed I, I've given you the URL. I'll show you, show this as well in just a few moments. Or I, actually, I've may, already made a video about the data assignment. It's on a, a, a real um, full speed scientific data repository, mostly published papers. Not all of them are published papers, but mostly published papers called Dryad. I believe this is um, managed by the um, Royal Ecological Society or, or maybe the Ecological Society of America. It's an academic um, data repository. It has agriculture, animals, um, vet, uh, and, and and plain old ecology as well. Um, so you take your real data set and you're going to first convert that into tidy data format with an Excel file, just as we've gone through examples and lectures and in the boot camp. You're going to use that data set to motivate some um, some objectives, some scientific questions. I've, I've prescribed three different statistical models. And you know they have to be appropriate for your data. What does that mean? Everybody's got a different data set. Appropriate to your data means, I really mean this in the, the broadest possible sense. Your hypotheses um, have to literally have to fit the variable types that are in your data set. Uh, you don't have to analyze the whole data set either. Uh, I should say that it's not in the guidance, but um, if you have a very large data set or lots and lots of variables, I don't expect you to analyze all of the, the variables pick some, pick some that um, are intuitive to you. And by fitting the um, scientific questions being appropriate for the data, what I mean is that um, if you if you have a uh, continuous variable, like let's say crop yield, I'm just making it up, it could be anything. 
a continuous numeric variable like crop yield that's a dependent variable, something you want to predict that you're interested in. I mean, one of the things you want to do is find out, well, what is a what is a likely dependent variable in my data set here? Um, maybe it's a numeric um, variable like crop yield. And then you, you would, might pick some other variable in the data set appropriate for the data to construct a, an objective about. Let's say that there was a pollinator abundance kind of thing and your, your hypothesis was, um, is there a, a numerical association between pollinator abundance and crop yield? You know, uh, we might pick an appropriate statistical test. If we think there's a causative relationship with this, we might pick simple linear regression. Okay. So we do that three times and we report and we re perform the statistical analyses, report the results for each objective. Um, it's also a point to demonstrate a few techniques. I said, don't show off, but this isn't showing off. You, you will want to demonstrate that you can do some things that we, we talked about as learning objectives in this module. Uh, now within the subjects we cover, means that um, you it's an artificial constraint which i i apologize for but uh, i would like you to constrain the methods you use to those which we covered specifically in this this module it's partly for your own protection i don't want anybody to attempt a fancy thing uh, i want i want you to think about the simplest thing you can do with the data you've been assigned there are some constraints and uh, one of the constraints is that the uh, methods that you use must be ones that we cover in the module. Um, so there are a couple of deliverables. Uh, one is the tidy data set, one is the report itself, and one is a repeatable R script. 100% repeatable. The only exception to um, me being able to run your entire script is uh, if I put your script and your data set into a folder and I set my own working directory to that folder, your script should run without errors and reproduce all of the results that you report in your report. So um, I have some extra detail here. I have already gone through this um, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the tidy data set. So we'll, we'll um, have a look at that and I have already made the uh, data set video boot camp lecture, um, but I will go through an example starting from scratch with one of these in these sessions, um, but it will be in a separate video. Maybe, maybe I'll start that tonight if people want to. Um, second deliverable is the analysis report. Now I am going to go through this one in a bit of detail now. And if we go down here, the last deliverable is that reproducible R script. Okay. So let's look at what the um, the details of the report should be. I've I've tried to um, give enough brief detail here that is not overwhelming, but is very straightforward and has very clear guidance. You can read these first few paragraphs yourself about what the three statistical models and uh, things are, and we we can discuss this further. But I wanted to look at the um, the sections. The sections of your report should be named exactly these things. Um, should have the title, your student ID, background, methods, results, conclusions, and literature cited. And for each one of those sections, um, I, I tell you exactly what I think should be in that section with, with guidelines about how long it should be and what it should contain. So um, I think that's as much as I want to go. We have already gone over this. I just wanted to put a point on it um, tonight and, and put a point on where it was, where this material is. Document that before we begin. Now, um, I think that's the end of my prepared lecture for, uh, for tonight, launching this first session. And uh, the last thing that I'll say before I stop this video uh, and, and I'll happily take a few questions after this video, is um, 
that uh, a thing that <clears throat> a thing that um, that I also plan to do in in these meetings starting tonight, if people want to, or or perhaps starting uh, next week, will be to uh, start from one of the unassigned data sets that are just exactly like the ones that are assigned. Make it tidy. Ta I'll talk through the process, and then maybe start the process of a tidy script and building and and um, an analysis, and we can even look at building building a uh, report. Now, um, I may not I may not have the time in these meetings to to completely in real time <laughs> do all of that stuff, but um, it should be enough just to set up the documents and to build and explore one or two hypotheses and look at how you translate from from the data set to the script to the um, to the um, report with, with with one and and then also point out the resources in the boot camp or maybe other places that are relevant to the steps that I'll be taking so uh, we can discuss that so I'm going to stop the video here and uh, then I'll um, I'll answer any questions if there if there are some so just give me a moment for this video to stop. <laughs>